This is Between the Brackets, a MediaWiki podcast, episode 38, July 9th, 2019. Welcome to Between the Brackets. I'm your own Karen. My guest this week is Brian Davis, who is a principal software engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation. Brian heads up the cloud services team, which is part of the technical engagement group. He was also the head of the developer advocacy team, also within the technical engagement group until a few months ago. He's still part of the team, although he no longer heads it. So Brian, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, Where do you live? I am in Boise, Idaho. Cool. Um, so, uh, what were you doing before you started uh, working on MediaWiki? Oh, uh, making money in the nasty corporate way, I guess. Uh, mm. day, day, day job minus one for me was at a company called Count that does uh, card not present fraud detection systems. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, and, uh, and so how did you end up getting involved with MediaWiki? Um, <clears throat> well, that's probably a good question. So I, I had I had used MediaWiki as a, like intranet documentation system uh, probably yeah. as early as 2005-ish. 2004 2005 oh wow okay um and then not used it uh that that so that was day job minus two and then at day job minus one the the operations team decided that they didn't like media wiki and they liked some other wiki i don't remember now which one docu wiki maybe i bet docu wiki was the one that we used um yeah, so I continue to do some some work with that, you know, this kind of like local unreleased extension development hack sort of stuff. Um, and then uh, one day I realized that I was old. I turned 40 and realized that I was old and decided that it would be really awesome if I could find a job where people would pay me to work on open source software instead of it just being a hobby. And... Uh, Started looking and and uh, ran across some some job ads from Wikimedia Foundation, and got really geeked out, excited that oh my gosh, there's there's jobs here and they pay people, and uh, was was lucky enough to to interview and get hired. Yeah. Okay. Well, what year was that? I guess I, I realize now people can figure out your age based on your answer. But uh... ah, that's all right. <laughs> I'm. Uh, it was. Uh, I my I started in July 2013. So I'm I'm coming right up on my sixth year anniversary working for the foundation. Yeah, cool. So wait, so you, so you're saying you were you were doing MediaWiki extension development, just Company. you know as a side project. Uh, I did a couple. WikiWiki? I did a couple of MediaWiki ones way way back in the day, like would have been before 2006. Uh, okay, but, for, for but a year. We're never. Yeah, they were just internal, like nothing we ever released, and they were horrible, horrible hacks, right? Right. Like yeah. Adding parser functions that ran Java binaries <laughs> to do things, sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but so, the, but then, but then, you know, uh, what kind, what kind of stuff, open source stuff, MediaWiki or otherwise, were you doing before you joined? Before yeah, you, you before you know, I got you to the foundation, for the Wikimedia Foundation. Yeah. Um, I was, let's see, I, I did some pretty major feature edition contributions to a project called Fing that was a PHP clone of Ant, so a build tool that was all written in PHP. Um, huh. drive-by contributions to all kinds of little things going all the way back to, I was actually on the 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 mailing list for the NCSA HTTPD server that eventually turned into the Apache project because we all got tired of trading patches on a mailing list and and somebody started a project around it. Um, but I was never I was never anything big in that that community. Mostly a mostly a lurker. Um, 
And I, uh, I'm still to, to this day, actually the maintainer of, uh, the YAML extension for PHP. So it's a, a Peckle extension that, uh, that binds lib YAML into PHP and, and gives it what I hope is a decent interface for people to use. Um, that, that was probably the biggest one that I've, that I've ever worked on, ran, maintained sort of in a project. Oh, okay. So you've been a, you've been an open source person for a long time. It, it sounds like it, you know it wasn't just a a, a lark. I it, I mean, if you were working on Apache before, it was even called Apache. Yeah, I mean, I think I think broadly, my my entire career has been enabled by open source software, and and I've tried to participate and give back when I can. Right. Um, yeah. I started. I started running web servers on the internet in 1995 and that was all, you know, Linux and NCSA, HTTPD and send mail and all, all that kind of open source goodness. Um, and basically yeah. every commercial company that I've worked at would not have existed if it wasn't for open source to build upon, right? Like I, I was never anywhere that made enough money that we could really afford to buy all of our software off the shelf. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. But you, were you, were you sort of the, the, the open source guy at every company? Like the, the, the person people went to for, for issues with Linux or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, to some extent, I guess I was, um, the, the Wikimedia foundation, I guess maybe interestingly is the first place that I wasn't a technical co-founder. Uh, so, okay. so I was kind of always the it guy <laughs> everywhere else. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't just open source. It was, you know, the, the software and it stuff in general. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, uh, and, and have you been at at Boise? Have you have you lived there your whole life? Yeah, yeah. I I yeah. Uh, grew up in a, a small town nearby called Emmett, and I uh, went to college in a mid-sized town nearby called Caldwell, mm -hmm. and then ever since college graduation, I've been in Boise working in tech. Cool. Um. So yeah, onto uh, onto MediaWiki and the Wikimedia Foundation and everything. Um, actually, a few months ago, I had Andre Klopper as a guest, who is also a member of the technical engagement team, uh, but he's not a member of the, or the, the technical engagement group. Uh, he's not a member of the cloud services sub-team or team that you are the head of. Um, so it, it, we talked about, uh, about developer advocacy, but... Um, which is the other team, but uh, what specifically does cloud services do? Hmm. You know, I've been working for two and a half years on an elevator pitch for this. Let's see if we get a good one today. <laughs> uh, um, I think that the, the easiest, well, maybe maybe the easiest thing to say is what we do is is that we run a public cloud infrastructure that is available for use by anyone affiliated with the Wikimedia movement who needs technical resources to work on uh, either develop or deploy software that has benefit to the movement at large. Um, so that's kind of rambling and full of buzzwordy things. So let's say that we're, we're AWS for the wikis, right? Um, okay. I, I think I understand. <laughs> I mean, uh, we uh, with with Andre we talked about um, we talked about Toolforge. Um, yeah. Is it, does that does that all, does that fall under the cloud services umbrella? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so the cloud services the, the the base of everything is is a an open stack which is a a, a freely available uh, open source software project right of its own right with its own foundation. Um, that, that helps us manage. We basically we have a pile of big computers. Let's say there's about 20 of them today, really big computers and OpenStack lets us split that up into a lot of smaller virtual computers. That's, that's the AWS like part, right? Um, right. And so in doing that, um, OpenStack has this concept of, of projects, which is, 
basically a, a, a quota pool of like how much CPU and RAM can be used and then a list of the users that can manage that CPU and RAM. And today we have about 170 different projects running in, in the OpenStack uh, cluster that, that Cloud Services team maintains. And one of those projects is the Toolforge project, which the Cloud Services okay. team is also the primary maintainers of. Um, but we have a lot of partnership there with with community members who who assist as as administrators for the Toolforge environment as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what about uh, the the Wikimedia sites themselves, like Wikipedia and all that? Do those are are you is Cloud Services also in charge of keeping up those servers? No, no. Those those are operated by by the the site reliability engineering or SRE team at, at the foundation. And they're um, actually very purposefully uh, isolated from the environment that we run um, to, to try to reduce uh, security risks that might happen. Right. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Basically inside cloud services, functionally we have to treat it as it's open to the entire internet, right? Like we have a little gatekeeping about who gets in there, but, but really, yeah. It could be anybody anywhere on the planet could be running a virtual machine inside our environment. So we need to keep that pretty separate from yeah. you know, where the secrets are in production. Yeah, that makes sense. So so besides Toolforge, what are some of the other things that uh that, that you're in charge of the the running of? Uh that's Toolforge is really the main pro virtualized project that that we manage um, and the underlying infrastructure. And then there's a whole bunch of kind of support services services around the outside of of OpenStack. So uh, the wiki replicas are are something that that people who've worked in Toolforge or or cloud services might might be used to uh, seeing or using. So these are um, a copy of all the production databases from from the the wiki farm so all well, wait, all the public wikis anyway so 750 of the 800 wikis or so um we get a copy of um not the page content data because we don't have enough space to have a second page of oh, okay. second second hold of all the page content right. but but like all the metadata like all the things that you would be used to seeing when you looked at uh the the history page for an article or oh, okay. um we're doing content patrolling those kinds of things we we have all of that data mirrored into uh uh right now a cluster of 3 pretty large beefy database servers um, and we make those available um, to to people inside the the, the cloud environment um, so you can get there from toolforge you could get there from another arbitrary cloud vps project and um, there's also a web interface called quarry that that lets you write queries against those databases just using your uh, just using oauth with your regular wikipedia editor account yeah, okay. What's what's what would be the what's the purpose of of being able to access like the the history page page yeah. and everything or something? That's No, that, I mean what's what, what's a what's a use case for that? Yeah, why why do people do it? Um basically it, it goes along with with the whole idea of tools and tool forge which are filling in the gaps that that the MediaWiki core software doesn't quite handle for um various content curation uh, workflows, right? So um, vandal fighting, um, looking for different kinds of, um, uh, like something I was helping somebody with just over the weekend on IRC was they, they were, uh, they work on a wiki that uses flagged revisions and they have a bot that creates uh, a list of pages that, that, have a revision that needs to be reviewed and all which also include transcluding a particular template um so people yeah. basically make weird and not not weird in, in bizarre but weird in like outside the normal stuff that media wiki does queries against the metadata to try to find 
problems that need to be fixed or gaps that need to be addressed, that that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's interesting. It's a, I, I, it's a, I guess you're saying a lot of those bots, anti-vandalism or anything else are actually not querying Wikipedia directly, but are querying your, I guess that is the word, uh, your uh, copy of the data? Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, yeah, it, it, it's especially for things that, that nobody's written an action API module to expose, right? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of these kinds of like analytic data mining sort of queries that people want to do and we can't just let them go against the produ production public or pub excuse me go against the production cluster of databases and maybe you know right. mess something up or maybe maybe accidentally see data that's supposed to be private right so yeah. the, the wiki webrica has kind of filled this gap and and this was something that they started doing um, way back in the, in the tool server days, I think going all the way back to like 2005 ish, there was some kind of copy of partially redacted copy of the database that was available for, for tool server. And that's just kind of been carried on as the project came over to the foundation in 2013 ish and became tool labs at that point. And then, uh, we rebranded it to tool forge about two years ago now two and a half years ago right oh okay yeah cool I, I i don't think i actually knew about all that the the wiki replicas or wiki clones or whatever you uh call them uh yeah that's pretty neat um so um uh moving on i guess uh you personally have been part of a big effort at so-called liberization of MediaWiki, uh, which is also known as decoupling. I believe that's the same thing. Um, yeah, probably mostly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so the the basic idea, if I understand this correctly, is to move as much MediaWiki code as possible from the core into independent standalone libraries that could, in theory, be run separately from MediaWiki. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's 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 a good rough overview. Yeah, I mean, basically, right? We've got this we've got this incredible code base that's been worked on by hundreds, maybe even thousands. I don't know. I haven't looked at right. the contributor count for a long time, right? That that solves really interesting problems, and a lot of the problems that get solved are not specific to MediaWiki and handling wiki text content, right? Like they're just general right. problems with running web servers that do cool things. Um, so gosh, what was that like December of, I guess it would have been Q3 of fiscal year 2013, 2014 maybe was this early as we started to do that or maybe it's not 2014 2015 anyway like like october of 2014 basically i i um helped write a pitch to to do this to start breaking these libraries out you know extracting things and um got got to work on that with with a team of of great people um canal uh lego ktm for for those yeah. who who follow around on on wiki names uh was helping me with that project. Aaron Schultz was helping me with that project. Uh, I think Brad Jorsch helped with a couple things during that. And we kind of tried to just kick bootstrap the idea of like how to break a library out, where to put it, how to manage things, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's the benefit of doing that? Uh, you know, I guess for both the, for, for, for MediaWiki and for the outside world, I guess. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a good question too. Um, <clears throat> I think, I think that the, the benefit for the outside world is, um, increasing the number of high quality PHP libraries that are out there. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just declaratively say that if it comes out of MediaWiki, it's probably high quality, uh, sure. at least high security. Um, so I think for the general PHP ecosystem, that's that's kind of an advantage. Um, for MediaWiki as a software project, I think I think there's a couple potential advantages. Um, one of them is is kind of the decoupling thing that you mentioned, right? So 
as you move things into these separate libraries, you, you you're forced to look at them and, and examine like, is is this particular class reaching across class boundaries and doing something funky with some other piece of code? And if so, how yeah. do we decouple those things and make them so that they can, so that the part that we're pulling out as a library cannot really know about internal implementation details of other things that are inside MediaWiki. Right. Um, and then I think a, a, an additional potential advantage, and I don't know that we've actually seen this hold true yet, but, but a potential advantage is that it, it should be easier to get contributions to smaller libraries that are more general purpose than to get contributions to MediaWiki as a big old monolith, right? If if our pieces of our stuff are being used in more places by more people, then they should get looked at by more eyes and we should get more bug reports and we could, should get more help with fixing those bugs. Right. Well, so I guess that leads to the, the, the obvious question, which is, is anybody using any of these uh, spun off libraries outside of MediaWiki? Uh, another good question, and, and one that honestly, uh, off the top of my head, I can't really answer too much other than um, the Composer Merge plugin, which is something that we built during that, that first librarization project. Um, at least was actively used by the Drupal community for a while. Oh. Uh, I think they ended up refactoring their code base so they didn't need it, but they had okay. a very similar problem to ours where they were trying to mix use of Composer um, between the system itself and the deployment environment. And and so they they used that that project and and contributed some some reasonably good patches to it. Um, yeah, I think we we yeah. could maybe go to Packagist and browse around and and see if there are things that look like their install and use counts are are higher than they would be just for MediaWiki. But I don't think okay. that the foundation has actually tracked that at any point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard to tell. I guess. Uh, and. and, and... Often bug bug reports are the first time you hear. About yeah, reason. exactly. <sighs> you, usually, breaking breaking change in version upgrades are the first time you find out that you know some something somewhere the International Space Station is dependent on your software or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um. Um. Yeah, we've, we've had had the the guys from NASA and the International Space Station stuff on this podcast actually. Um, so, um, uh, let's see, are you still involved with that project? The, the liberalization thing? Uh, casually, I, I, I still watch the fabricator work boards and, uh, some, sometimes I, I help with code review on, on some of the things, but I haven't really actively done any work in that area, uh, on MediaWiki for probably, probably going on three years now yeah okay um yeah i looked at some of the pages there's some pretty big chunks of media wiki that that i, I guess are planned to get or, or there's a discussion of spinning them off um including resource loader and some other big ones um um yeah i mean is um are there obstacles to that besides just the the technical ones i mean just in terms of people not wanting to relinquish control over you know big parts of media wiki that kind of thing yeah i i i honestly don't think we've seen any real pushback from anybody that's like ego based like that we're like oh no this thing is mine and you can't do anything with it um it's mostly the the technical challenges of of figuring out how to untangle things, right? And how figuring out where to introduce um, new interfaces that could go along with, with the library part, right? That then tie back into MediaWiki for, for the things that, that get pretty scarily MediaWiki um, centric inside the, the code logic. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it makes sense that that's the big challenge. 
so so I guess this sort of ties into an, another issue, which is um, making use of outside libraries and standards within MediaWiki, making it more, I guess, friendly with the outside world or something. I don't know. Uh, um, you uh, you helped to lead an effort to get MediaWiki to use a standard called PSR3 for logging info messages and errors and stuff. Yeah. I don't know what happened to PSR1 and 2, but... Uh, 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 yeah, P PSR1 and 2 are out there. They're they're different things. They're, they're not related to logging. I can't... Oh, really? Okay. okay. I think PSR2 is now deprecated in favor of PSR4. It was about autoloaders and... PSR one, I think, is about code formatting, like a a formatting standard for PHP. Oh, okay. Um, so when uh, when was that done? That whole um, that whole effort. Oh well, you're gonna make me go look at my own MediaWiki.org <laughs> user page. This is a real trip down memory lane. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm an old guy. My my brain doesn't work so good anymore. Um, gosh, does it even really say here? Structured logging for MediaWiki. Let's see what the dates on the RFC are. Creation date, December 2013. Uh, oh, okay. Looks like... Well, that's, I, when the, that's when the discussion started. Yeah, that's um, when the discussion started. And I think, I want to say... I want to say it was about... Seven, eight months later before we actually had things working well enough that that it started making its way into production um, for the for the Wikimedia wikis yeah um, were there any challenges with that oh my gosh there were so many <laughs> <laughs> there were so many because um, it seems I mean it, it seems like a pretty uh, pretty straightforward thing to just you know change the logging code to use some standard about how logging logs messages should be uh structured or something yeah so i think the 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 very like that that part of it i think was was relatively straightforward there were some some kind of fiddly bits about so one of the things that i was trying to do when i introduced it was um not really have two completely separate logging systems, right? So there was an existing logging system within MediaWiki using MW debug and MW log messages from from their uh, methods from the global. What is that file called? Global methods, global something. Oh, global functions. Stuff global you functions. Can... There you go. Um, so I wanted it all to tie into global functions. So there was. There was some complexity introduced because of that, but the the biggest complexity was um, bringing the very first composer managed libraries into MediaWiki core and figuring out uh, okay. how that would how that would work. Not necessarily from a generic use of MediaWiki standpoint, but from a a, a Wikimedia production environment point of view. Um, and that that was really quite a bit of work, and that that was where the composer merge plugin work uh, came from. Um, so there was there was an existing composer.json in in the root of of MediaWiki core .git um, that was mostly there to enable using uh, composer to m install extensions, right? Yeah. Okay. And we needed um, that the workflow for doing that was that there was this composer.json. And then if you were going to install an extension, then you edited it locally and you basically made a dirty diff in your, your local environment. Right. Yeah. And yeah. We thought that that was well, any diff know, is sort of a dirty diff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. But, but something you couldn't commit back upstream, right. Because well, yeah, it's specific yeah. to your deployment. Right. Um, and so uh, the composer merge plugin work was was basically to make it so that we could um, I, I'm, I'm gonna say steal 
composer json file back for use by by media wiki itself but still provide a mechanism where uh, a local deployer of media wiki could use composer to uh to install extensions um without causing that dirty diff sort of thing so it, it introduced a way that that you could have a composer.local.json file um, that you could manage yourself locally and not worry that the next time you unpacked a tarball it would overwrite it and lose all your things right so that's interesting. I didn't realize that P- the PSR three basically added the first library or li- outside library or libraries into MediaWiki. Yeah, well, at least the first one that wasn't included by embedding. So there, right, right, there were yeah. a couple of other like you know third party developed code pieces in MediaWiki, but they were just copied into the MediaWiki tree, and then somebody would just try to remember to update them occasionally. Um, so they they were really more forks than using libraries. Um, so yeah, that the, the PSR three work was the first place where we we made all that composer managed library stuff happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, now it all makes sense. It sounds like the actual logging part was, was sort of a an afterthought to the the real uh, challenges uh, there um, uh, in terms of starting to use composer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for for MediaWiki itself, for the MediaWiki end user community, yeah, that 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 the logging, the PSR three logging bits are probably not very exciting at all. Um, they they actually were the reason that it all started from the foundation side. So um, right. at the at the time, I was on what was called the MediaWiki core team, and we were. We were sort of the uh, the the group of ruffians who were tasked with fixing all the things that didn't have a dedicated team, and uh, so that meant we spent a lot of time looking at log files, and we wanted right right structured logging right. We wanted we wanted we wanted logging that could be parsed more easily than writing really long said in ox scripts on the command line to find things. Um, yeah. No, yeah, it makes sense. I, ju- I just meant in terms of the the um, the, the work involved, that was th- that was a much less uh, that was a, a much less big deal than than getting all the than bringing in out- outside libraries. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, but well, speaking of using using an, an existing standard like PSR three, are there other places in MediaWiki or are there other outside um, standards and and libraries where you think uh, MediaWiki code? should conform more to the, the standards or, or, or replace some of its own code with outside libraries? Ah, uh, those are good questions. Off the top of my head today, I don't know of any other uh, PSR standards that would be a really great fit into MediaWiki. There was some discussion recently in the RFCs about um, adding a REST interface uh, there's a, there's a PSR around uh, like a request response object pair, and so there was some discussion in that about whether it should be used or not. And then I think they eventually discarded it because um, it wasn't found to be a good fit for the functional needs of MediaWiki. Um, on the library side. I think it's it's quite possible that there are more chunks of code that we have written that there's some other library that does, you know, 80 to 90% of the same thing and does it does it better or does it in a way that would be uh, less toil for us in the long term for us as the you know the media wiki developer community in the long term to adopt using somebody else's piece instead of maintaining our own piece. Um, Right. It's it's a hard question to answer in the abstract and an easier question to answer like looking at a particular piece of code. Yeah, okay. Um yeah, I mean, well, I I I barely even know the all all the uh not even. I barely know the 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 whole PHP ecosystem and all that, but there's, you know, I don't know, there's stuff like Smarty and and Symphony and I don't even yeah. know if I'm saying the right buzzwords, but um, <laughs> um, 
and mustache. I guess mustache is actually being used in MediaWiki, though. I don't even really understand what it does, but um, yeah, there is there is some version of of uh, I think handlebars is maybe the mustache variant that ended up getting into core. Uh, it's it's basically a templating language, a, like a logic free templating language. So it's just a put your substitutions here sort of templating system. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, well, so anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if I'd I'd have a follow up if I understood any <laughs> what these things mean, but um, so so um. But that's that. That's interesting, though. No, I, 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 I'm, I, I can. I, it certainly makes sense that uh, you know these things would be a lot easier to do if it, you know starting from a blank versus starting with a from a major project like MediaWiki, um, uh, or a very mature project, I should say. Um, so, uh, so getting away from some of this technical stuff, um, uh, the entire Wikimedia Technology Department, uh. Every quarter, they put up a nice wiki page with the goals for the following quarter. Uh, so, just looking through the 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 last few quarters, um, for a while now, you've been in charge of a goal called Build Technical Community, uh, which is, of course, a very broad goal. Um, yes. <laughs> what kinds of specific things have you been involved in with that? Uh, so, uh, most of our efforts there are are around. Um, taking advantage of the Google Summer of Code and, and outreachy internship programs and trying yeah. to get uh, trying to get people, usually college age students, right? Google Summer of Code is a is a college that I think you actually have to be enrolled in a in a public or in a college or university to be part of that. But yeah. basically bringing in early mostly early career uh, new contributors into working with open source projects that are, that are related to media wiki, uh, somehow. Um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of the work there. And then some of it is, is also doing similar kinds of outreach, um, organized around the, the, the EU hackathon and the, and the Wikimania hackathon. Um, again, just to kind of, drag in some new people and and show them what open source contributions are kind of like and then cross our fingers and hope that five percent of them or so stick around and and continue contributing because they fall in love with our community and our problems and 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 our you know our larger mission right right by by problems i assume you mean you know technical challenges <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah hopefully they don't fall in love with our social problems <laughs> yeah, hopefully they, they help uh, us make our social problems better <laughs> right yeah yeah um uh so yeah i mean the 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 listing of goals uh, uh on mediawiki.org every goal gets its own wiki page so so there's a whole long wiki page on mediawiki.org just for that goal of build a technical community um, I'll have a link to that page from the podcast page, but um, um, a lot of it is not uh, related to MediaWiki per se because it's it's about getting people to use the Wikipedia API more and and you know the technical uh, aspects that are that aren't you know don't relate to MediaWiki. Uh, they're they all they all sound like worthy goals, but they don't really fit in with this podcast. But um, there's one part of it that does fit in and uh, and sort of speaks to me personally, which is uh, trying to increase both the usage and development of MediaWiki extensions among third-party MediaWiki users. Um, and, and that goal is right now associated with two specific tasks. First is, uh, and I'm quoting, maintain an up-to-date list of MediaWiki extensions, including information documenting the level of support of those that are supported. Uh, and that's a long one. And second is maintain and evolve the extension management system in Medi- in MediaWiki to increase dissemination of extension information. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if anything. I don't, I'm not really. I mean, I I don't I don't I don't think there's any real work happening on either of those. At least I haven't heard. But um, 
uh, that's not really what I'm asking, uh, but I'm I'm just wondering from your perspective, what what do you think an ideal extension management system for MediaWiki would look like? Oh man, that's a that's a good question. It's this is so, something that comes up a lot in the the enterprise MediaWiki world that I'm yeah. Part of. So one one that I people have talked about a lot, and I'm not myself really super familiar with it, but uh, people have talked quite a bit about the um, WordPress extension environment, right? And, and right. The, the, the way they package and the way they do documentation is something that we could look to as um, a bit better uh, solution, especially for the, you know, I'm maintaining a running instance of MediaWiki sort of point of view. Because um, today it's, I mean, what, you go read a wiki page and it says, well, there's about seven ways to do it and you've got to pick one and we can't right. really tell you which is better because people who write this documentation also tend to edit English Wikipedia or another Wikipedia and, and try to stick to neutral point of view even when they're talking about their own projects and solutions. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, right. right. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think... You know, broadly, anything that that would make MediaWiki less of a less of a you have to read dozens of wiki pages and probably ask questions on IRC or a mailing list to figure out how to deploy it well, um, and something that got more towards um, you know run through this wizard and we will get you up to speed with a very basic system that can do X things and then go over here and start turning on feature flags to, to bring in new stuff would be, you know, a, a lot more ideal, I think, than, than what we have today. Yeah. I, I, are you in charge of that? I mean, uh, if it, are you ultimately the person who would, say you know this this approach makes sense to, for that this approach doesn't make sense uh not really so i i am i am the the titled manager of that program but those two particular kind of goals and outcomes um i think today would be owned by uh what's called the core platform team which is kind of the modern evolution of what the old media wiki core team was um yeah those, okay those those were actually things that uh when when the foundation hired oh i'm gonna i'm gonna butcher her last name cindy shikalis when when oh, we hired all right awesome when, when <laughs> we hired her um that was kind of the idea originally that 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 was going to be her job was to be a uh, product manager for media wiki right and and especially somebody yeah. who could help us interface with um what the foundation calls the third party users, right? Like that everybody that's not the Wikimedia foundation that's using the software. Um, but I, I think unfortunately that, that as these things happen, people found other things that were more important for Cindy to do and that she really hasn't had a lot of chance to work on, on those particular problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, yeah, of course, of course, being able to have a, have a fully integrated system like WordPress would be great. But uh, but um, uh, there can be changes made to MediaWiki.org itself to uh, you know to more to enable things like voting on extensions and stuff unrelated to any integration with MediaWiki itself. Uh, there actually was a project that to improve a, a site called Wiki Apiary, uh, a, a Google Summer mm -hmm. of Code project. Actually, speaking of that. Uh, the idea, I, I think, originally was to move that functionality into MediaWiki.org, but there was no consensus that uh, there was no uh, agreement that that uh, was a good idea. So it's still there. Everything's just on, on that separate uh, yeah. site. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Wiki Apiary is now running in in the cloud services environment. Oh so yeah, least, that's right. At, at I least, knew that. yeah, at least yeah. we're helping out with that part of hosting it. But right, yeah. Yeah, I think I think one of the one of the questions that we ran into when we were um, collectively we were were talking about um, putting functionality like that into MediaWiki.org is how to do it right and whether it would be 
semantic media wiki or cargo or a new custom extension that did something and and whichever of those who would be responsible for maintaining it and how would we get it security reviewed and how we would get it deployed in wikimedia production all right. that kind of stuff so it's it's one of those things that like because of the way that the, the the wiki farm is managed at the wikimedia foundation which is basically all of the code and all of the extensions for all of the wikis are on all of the nodes in the media wiki cluster and then it's it's kind of just a matter of the apache front router and and some custom php shim code at the beginning that that decides that any particular request uh, which wiki database it's going to and which extensions will be enabled, et cetera, et cetera. Um, adding new things to that environment is not a quick process. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sure, that, that, sure. that makes a lot of these initiatives kind of stall out just because the people who are excited about them initially become less excited as they find out they're stalled. And um, if if you don't have... Sadly, basically, if you don't have the energy to stick with for a year shouting about, I really need this thing to happen, it's probably not going to end up happening. Yeah. Um, are you are you suggesting to anyone listening to this podcast that if that they should be shouting more and that would increase the chance of <laughs> this kind of thing being done for, for those who care about if, it? If you're constructively shouting, yes. Angrily um. shouting won't help a lot, but constructively <laughs> yeah. shouting uh, and, you know, our, our, the RFC process or discussions on Fabricator, or discussion yeah. on mailing lists are all things that go go to helping these things um, move forward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I, and actually, I, I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that you've that you've heard of uh, Semantic Community Week in Cargo. Um, so actually, that's already a positive indicator <laughs> <laughs> well i i've heard of semantic media wiki in part because i was responsible for ripping it out of wiki tech oh yeah okay right 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 yeah which was yeah. was no value judgment against the extension itself it was kind of a value judgment against uh us having uh, us being the wikimedia foundation having a difficult time uh figuring out how to to manage deploying it and to keep up with security reviews for changes in it um and it, it got to a point that the utility that we were getting from it on wiki tech wasn't worth the pain of of keeping up with the upstream software um and we kind yeah, of got okay. you know yeah. we got stuck on a legacy branch at some point and then it was easier just to get rid of it than than to try to figure out how to catch up yeah that's interesting. That's the that's the clearest explanation I've heard actually of of why it was uh, removed. But it yeah, makes, that's it true. I mean, sense, but, um, yeah, um, yeah, it's good to know. I, I uh, yeah, I haven't I hadn't thought about that in a while. But <laughs> that's that is. Yeah, I did, yeah. didn't mean to pick old scabs. There, uh, but you've you've got well, cargo no longer, now, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> that's all the past that was a long that was a while ago that was four years ago or something or or more um i think um so um so moving on um tied in to some extent with building the technical community is the idea of increasing the the diversity the demographic diversity of the technical community uh which is uh, I guess a, a goal of outreachy, which you mentioned before specifically, um, it's it's actually not listed as a goal for the technical engagement group, as far as I can tell. But uh, it certainly is a goal for the Wikimedia Foundation as a whole. I mean, it, it's even included in the code of conduct uh, that uh, you know targeted outreach is encouraged, even even though it's uh, discriminatory. But um, uh, so well, so so that, I want to. That ask was a all, very political statement you slipped in there. <laughs> Well, I, I, that's uh, that's that's what it says. I think, I think it's. It, I mean, it says you know discrimination is outlawed, with the exception of targeted outreach to uh, to marginalized and otherwise underrepresented groups. Oh. I'm just reading here from the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, I'll go, I'll go with that. 
<laughs> it's all political, of course. But um, um, uh, uh, so well, so I wanted to ask first of all, is it a goal of the technical engagement group to uh, to increase the demographic diversity of MediaWiki developers or of the technical community in general? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think broadly it is. Um, I think I don't I don't know that we've ever tried to write a specific um like quarterly goal that that or or even a, even an annual program that specifically targets that um other than like as you mentioned that that we participate in outreachy um it, it's one of those things that it's it, it's difficult to come up with uh what the, the the business term key performance indicators right it's it's difficult to come up with measurable metrics that you right. could you could tell that you were influencing um but i think broadly what what we do try to do is um to try to figure out ways to um to make communications flow more smoothly among the the volunteer developer community at, you know taken as a, as a massive at large and um to try to make uh safe spaces right for for people to ask questions and and get answers and and participate um in kind of the the human to human parts that that happen in in developing uh, in an open community software project um and make make those better and kind of hope that by doing that and the little bit of of work that we can do with with outreachy or um, you know one one of the things that we may be doing a little bit more in this coming fiscal year is um, kind of geographically targeting things so like trying to have um, more like workshops tutorial kind of things happen in particular regions of the world where where we see um, where the Wikimedia Foundation sees like a, a new content contributor language community forming that doesn't have a lot of technical experience within within the people who are coming together in the content community yet right and try to help them get some some developer people to be part of their group and to understand the kind of complex ecosystem that is uh, you know the media wiki deploy plus all the other things that makes wikipedia or wiki voyage or you know, wiki base work. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you, you, you view uh, diversity as a positive in the context of, of uh, contribution to wiki media projects where it's like, if, if you really want to have a contrib a big contribution to Wikipedia or anything else, you're going to have to to learn some of the internals of uh, media wiki and the other software. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, so any of the, you know, in 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 the Wikimedia projects, right? There there are um you know, gadgets and user scripts right. and Lua templates and, or Lua modules and complex templates and then all the kinds of like fill-in tool things to help with vandal fighting and and cleaning up, you know, cleaning up syntax changes and all, and all that kind of stuff that, that all take some amount of, of technical experience. Right. And, and there's, there's like kind of a differing or kind of a gradation, I guess, right. Of, of things that are easy to start with um, tend to kind of hit a, some point where, Oh, but I can't go any farther because there's no action API to get this data from. And then you get right. drug into like, oh, well, then I can contribute some code to either to core or to an existing extension, or maybe I need to make a whole brand new extension to, to expose this data. Um, so I kind of see it as like this whole ecosystem, right? That That's more than just MediaWiki, the PHP code base proper. Like there's a lot of things around it that, that make a healthy wiki happen. Um, yeah, and I, and I think that's true. Not even just at at the Wikimedia um, project level, right? I think I think to a certain extent that's that's true. If you're you know Darren and company at NASA, or or you're you know um, 
the, the NSA guys that that run the, or at least ran media wiki places or you're just running a, a media wiki for your little hobbyist club about whatever it is that you're documenting that that there's there's more to it than just the software install right like sure the absolutely wiki way yeah. is bigger yeah. than that yeah, uh, yeah, and at, at the at the last uh, Enterprise Media Wiki conference we had, there was a there was a lot of discussion about Lua, and you know people wanting to learn learn how to create modules and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I I think that's there's like an an interesting untapped market I think for um, like making a curated selection of of templates that would be of use in different you know, for different kinds of use of a wiki and, and making some kind of bundled distributions of those that I don't know that anybody's really ever tried to do. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. There are people who have done it. Uh, that also has come up as a, as a, as a, as a topic. Um, and it's something I think should be done more, but there, there are consulting companies who, who, who basically, uh, bundle, uh, in some cases they don't even mention the fact that it's media wiki or a wiki. It's just, you know, whatever the name of their, bundle is of core media wiki and extensions and templates and stuff yeah oh, absolutely. sure sure um yeah and you're yeah. going out of your way not to say blue spice so i shouldn't say blue spice uh, oh no i was i i know <laughs> that blue spice was the first and I, they're probably the most well known but but there's there's quite a lot uh of others at this point oh cool um uh yeah yeah but oh, yeah blue spice is definitely the is definitely uh, one of them uh they're they're pretty extreme. I don't know if extreme is the word, but they actually they they have they've modified MediaWiki and have done a lot of uh, customizations and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. And I've I, I've uh, I, I I I had a talk about. Sorry, this is. <laughs> I'm not sure where this is going, but I I had a talk about at, at the Enterprise MediaWiki conference where I, I said you know this is. It, it, anyone, anyone thinking of going into consulting with MediaWiki, that I, th I think that's really a, a great approach is to create your own bundle and uh, and and you know market your services around that because um, this it, it it makes things that I think a lot easier for the people installing it to have uh, well as you were saying at the beginning to to you know to have all of that stuff pre create pre created pre generated. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I think it's something that that we get occasional you know in the irc support channels that we get occasional people who pop in and they're like oh my gosh where are all the templates and we're like oh well you've got to go uh, find some <laughs> other wiki to borrow them from yeah right. oh yeah well right people who try to copy the whole setup from wikipedia that's a whole other <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's and, and i i there are definitely some really awesome templates on on various wiki projects um uh, um uh, but I wouldn't recommend that anybody try to take like all of English Wikipedia's templates and figure out how to use them because they'll end up with a giant pile of things in their wiki that they have no idea why they're there. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Cool. Um, so uh, you, you mentioned something before that was interesting uh, right at the beginning of talking about diversity, which is, you know, making, well, you, you use the, the, term safe spaces which is i think kind of a loaded term at this point <laughs> but uh, uh but just the idea of making um, I, I i guess if i can paraphrase just making things more uh making people more comfortable and removing negativity i guess from interactions of uh potential contributors um yeah i mean i think i think broadly when i think about that um I, I think about trying to trying to make less common. I mean, ideally, the goal is to eliminate, right? But to try to make less common incidents where um, people offend other people accidentally, right? Right. Um, when when you're working across the boundaries of space and time sort of <laughs> that, that, that being sure. an open source project right, brings right. to you, right? Like you, you'll end up interacting with people from a lot of different cultures and a lot of different backgrounds, and, you know, different, different religions, different political bents, different expressions of 
sexuality experience expressions of spirituality expressions of everything and, and to try to help help everybody understand that if we're here working together we're probably trying to work together and we don't want to make each other feel uncomfortable unnecessarily so helping set some some kind of guardrails about like just don't go over and talk about these topics um or and if somebody tells you that that you said something or did something that makes them feel uncomfortable own that and apologize for it and then both of you try to move on and and get past and get back to you know that that nice place of um assume good faith and and believing that that everybody who's here helping you is trying to help you and that nobody's trying to you know isolate you or marginalize you or or put you down yeah um yeah okay yeah yeah uh I I I thought you were going to talk more uh, more in terms of just you know uh, avoiding sarcasm and uh, and um, you know realizing the irony doesn't travel uh, well in text and that kind of thing, um, uh, as opposed to you know specific uh, derogatory statements about <laughs> about groups and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean. Ha- does that uh, well yeah I, I i don't know if you have thoughts about the prevalence of 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 you know specific slurs versus people just being just being uh, you know uh, uh, difficult <laughs> yeah i mean so i think a lot of a lot of the things that that i've i've seen myself happen and that others have brought to my attention are uh kind of things more more towards what you're talking about like um so one one of the things that we all kind of have to be aware of if, if we're trying to be socially humans developing software together, right, is that um, one one of the things that that varies a lot from from person to person is um, uh, what's what's a good word to use for it. I, every word's going to be loaded in some way, but let's <laughs> let's use the word tact, right? Yeah, okay. Like um, that that there are that depending on how your brain works and and how the 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 world that you live in most of the time works like you 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 might be a person who wants everything just as unvarnished statement of facts with no decoration whatsoever and so um right you try to model that in your own communications um and that that can lead to conflict with with people who live in a world where they want um, they want a lot of context along with statements and they want to they want to understand you know what what feelings things generate and and you know things that in the tech world are often called soft skills right like the, right. if you take a person who's who's thinking from that point of view and you put them together with a person who's thinking from the like I I would like most in life to be Spock point of view (laughs) and you put them together, you know, you, you put the the empath and the logician together, then you can end up with conflicts that neither side really wanted to happen. They just happened because of misunderstanding how the communications worked. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of what we struggle with, um, you know, as we're, I, I, I guess I'm using the royal we here, but there there are other people who help me. Like as as you're trying to moderate discussion and debate in an IRC channel or on a bug report or on a code review, um, that that you can you can help people try to get past those problems, right, and not get stuck on that person is a jerk and I don't like the way that they talk to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm rambling now, but eh, it's no, a good yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, it, yeah, it makes sense, and, and uh, that's definitely, um, yeah, I think uh, uh, empathy is always uh, is, is always useful, whether you're the w- w- whether you're the person A, person B, or person C in that scenario. I guess the the perpetrator, the victim, or the what's the word, the arbitrator, arbitrator. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um 
So I, I, I think that's just about all my questions. Um, uh, just just as as part of a part of a bigger thing. Um, are there any upcoming features or improvements that you're looking forward to for MediaWiki? I'm really interested to see how this uh, the the REST API thing comes together. Um, I've seen Tim Tim Starling and others doing quite a bit of work on it right now in Garrett um, while they're still working out some of the fine details in the RFC, but but trying to get ahead of that. Um, and I think there's some, some really interesting potential there for bringing... Um, the Action API is really... Um, it's an API that's that's mostly designed around the idea of changing content, and right. and I think I think a lot of the things that people are interested in in the the REST router parts for are more um, content centric APIs. So things that we have been doing at at the the, the foundation with with REST base and kind of Node JS based services that that do stuff. Um, and I'm I'm excited to see a lot more of that move uh, into being possible to implement in PHP. Whether it all is or not, that's a whole other thing. But being more possible, um, and then I'm super excited about all the work that's being done right now to port Parsoid to PHP um, as step zero of a multi-step plan to eventually make the Parsoid parser be the parser inside MediaWiki and get rid of the dual parser problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be really cool to, to be able to to have visual editor just work, uh, you know, out, out of the box. Um, yeah, among other benefits. <laughs> yeah, among, among others, yeah. Um, and then I, I think another thing that's, that's really untapped now is... Um, what the 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 multi slot system uh, enables multi content revisions I think is is what it ended up being called when it got implemented um, but that that was work that you know Daniel Kinsler led the, the the RFC discussion to make it possible that you could have um, basically a single page in the media wiki namespace that has multiple named data types associated with it so that um, you could have kind of wiki data data and some other differently structured data and some things that are generated um, by the parsing phase all get saved within the media wiki page context so that you could get them back out later. Um, and I, I think there's some interesting potentials there for um, not only wiki-based integration with MediaWiki, but you know potentially a lot of other um, you know like rich media systems like uh, mapping and graphing and and things where you need some structured data that goes along with this content article but isn't really part of the content article. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, I, th I think that's all my questions. Anything else you, uh, any last thoughts? <laughs> Parting thoughts? Um, <laughs> you know, I, one, of, one of the things I think, you know, your, your podcast probably reaches a lot of people that don't regularly interact with uh, the engineers at the Wikimedia Foundation, right. um, yeah. but who are using MediaWiki in some way, shape, or form in their world. And I would just like to invite all of those people to – Come join the ma mailing list. Come, come get on our bug tracker on Fabricator and help us understand the problems that you have. Um, I can't guarantee that we're going to solve any or really all, all or any of them. But the more that that we know, the more that we can collect this knowledge of what people are trying to do and where they're having problems, the better chance that we have as as you know an open source software development community to find solutions for that problems or find the common bits of those problems and make them easier to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, that's good advice. Well, uh, I guess that's it for the podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Thanks for having me. And 
and this has been another episode of Between the Brackets. I want to again thank my guest, Brian Davis of the Wikimedia Foundation. Thanks to all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time.